started. We got it. Atta girl. Oh, but this is going to be a good one today. Culture, culture, culture today. Uh, we welcome everybody. Of course, the show was brought to you by the fabulous Fishtown District for everything special, wonderful, happy, joyful. You can find it at Fishtown at the Fishtown District in K. Where can people find out about all the great things happening in the Fishtown District? You can always go to fishtowndistrict.com or check us out on YouTube, Fishtown District. Find us on Facebook, Fishtown District. Or we're on Instagram, Fishtown underscore district. Wow. Like, seriously, like you now you could be in the middle of diffusing a bomb and That's you the still one line nail I it. Say. Like, you know what? You're getting like very Laura ish. Have you noticed that? Like, you're I've, getting her I've public been trying speaking to voice. channel her voice a little bit because I know that she does all the PSAs here at WWDB. And I'm sorry, Laura, but I would like some of that spotlight, some of that shine. Yeah, I think you. I think you. I think you've earned that. But it's like as I'm listening to it, I could see all of that has rubbed off on you because, like, a, like a switch. I still like sound like from the kid from Northeast Philadelphia. You know, it doesn't pronounce his R's. And- but I feel like that's the charm of our show. Like one of us has to have that. You know, kind of broad northeastern accent and then somebody else has to be very true to philadelphia so very 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 true what else is fishtown besides that that's true and speaking of a treasure and gifts good morning sugar bear hey good morning oh you're on top of your game in there aren't you it's one of those days are you sure you're all right yeah i'm good had a tough morning traffic and yeah you know one of those days where it just doesn't it's not it doesn't you know start what? out as smooth as normal Some i have us- a new nickname for him <laughs> What? I was going to call him Eeyore. Don't. You know, no. But, no but, Eeyore. but no. you can see I hit a soft spot. Yeah. No, because he's like snuggly soft. I'm going to call you Charmin. Don't. But, do, no. Done. It's already done. I'm almost oh, glad boy. your show's over now. Oh, Are you boy. sure? <laughs> 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 well, you, well, listen, you didn't love Sugar Bear. I don't. Or Baby it. Bear. You didn't like baby that. Bear. Our guests are even saying, like, I want to hug him. Like, that's what you bring out. Your huggability. You little huggable bear, you. You're weird. <laughs> this is a perfect time to drop that phone number for folks to call it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We actually have like good guests and everything today. I know. We're going to talk about a lot about, you know, our Fishtown, of course, is known for its dynamic art scene, you know, but capturing the grittiness and the integrity of the people in it. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to, then there's actually an exhibit, an exhibition that's going to reflect that, uh, the current state of Fishtown. So we're looking forward to it. So if you want to be part of, of the hijinks, monkey shines, and fun, give us a call at 888-329-3306. I figured I would know this by now. I thought so. It's 888-329-3306. Be part of the fun. So, Kay. Yes, Mark. Uh, first of all, how are you? I'm doing pretty well today. Are how you? Are you? All right, because I remember the last time we were here, you were a little not, you're a little tired. I was. You know what? Today I'm doing a little better, and I think that's just because my stress level this week is ultra high. So, like, that oh. just, you know... Sleep isn't a thing. I'm just, I'm just awake. Why are you so stressed? I mean, I think I know, but yeah, I have um, a big debut to tonight. Ooh, wow, feels oh, strange well, to say. You know what? While we're doing that, since we're getting to you anyway, why don't we? Look, like, I can't load up Uni. Can we do Uni song though? Um, for our guest here, Uni is the magical unicorn that we actually take to go to a place called Case Corner. But of course, uh, we weren't here for two weeks. There you go. There you go. It's amazing we have a show. (laughs) Are you regretting this yet? (laughs) Just wait. (laughs) Yeah, it only gets. Yeah. Now, we forget to, of course, everyone remembers that, you know, Charmin killed him. While not taking care of him while we were here. So I'm just going to take a walk over. Sugar Bear, come with me. Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) To that magical place we call Kay's Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and listen. Nobody. Listen to me now. Kay's Corner. Whew. You made it. It's a long walk over there. I tell you, it's it's different uh, when you're I'm not gonna, riding gonna, a unicorn. I'm going to sit there. Well, <laughs> many things are. So I'm going to take a seat. So what's happening over in the corner? As my voice goes through puberty, it's like Peter Brady. Time well, to change. 
As oh. always, there is a lot happening over here in Kay's Corner and in the Fishtown District. Oh, can't wait to hear. And since we have some wonderful artists in the room, I figured I'd keep Kay's Corner also art-themed. Um, so today, I wanted to talk about a art project that we were just able to select 20 artists from the neighborhood um, to paint fish head trash cans. What? Yes. New fish head trash cans awesome. are coming to Fishtown. So we have 20 new cans coming. Um, we were just able, Mark got to be on the selection committee for uh, choosing the artists, which was... Um, ex- by the way, I paid attention. Yes, we were... I actually looked at Overwhelmed them. by the amount of submissions that we received. It was, um, it, they were awesome. They really were. So shout out to all of the artists who uh, were able to submit a design. We really appreciate all of the work and effort that you put into that. Um, for those of you who weren't selected, we hope that you stay tuned for future public art opportunities. Um, but they for were those, all great. They really were. It was such a hard decision. Um, Did you notice all? There was one common theme in the ones that I picked. Sports. Exactly. Uh, that's that the common was pretty theme in much our it. Yes. 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 Um, but we did have quite a few great submissions. People are coming to our office all week to pick up their fish heads and, and get started. So I'm very excited to see those. We should be able to debut those to the public sometime in March. That's awesome. Is there, are we going to put on our website our newsletter the final selections? Or are we going to wait? Um, I defer to you on this, Kay. I could put on our website the final designs, but I was going to wait just in case somebody, wait away. Uh, you know, changes Build, build the anticipation. Up. Yeah, I f- already sense it. I'm all a tingle. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, that has nothing to do with the fish heads, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but in addition to the fish head trash can project that we have going on, um, we do have another public art project that I'm going to let Mark talk about um, that is happening currently. With some of the students in our neighborhood. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh, Mark. We we do a lot of show show prep here, as you can tell. Why don't you tell us what's going on with that? Well, thanks, Kay, for that lead-in. And, of course, I'm very prepared. This is an exciting one. We're working with the Penn Treaty Special Services District. Shout out for their sponsorship on this. Absolutely. Um, And also, I want to give a shout out to... Um, neighbor Karen Javaruski, mm-hmm. uh, Maggie O'Brien, Thea Musselman, who mm-hmm. are working hard to do this. So we found a vacant space at 501 East Gerard Avenue, and we've worked. We're going to be providing materials to for at least four schools now that students. Wow, that's th- great. I think it's four. Might be. I think it's four. Okay. Um, and we're going to display pictures, murals that the kids do, and we're going to have a little exhibition. So we thought it was a great way to use. An empty space uh, that's being marketed, a um, way to activate it in a very productive way, and also let kind of really show the talent that the kids have. So uh, we just got our sponsorship, thank, again, from Penn Treaty, and we expect to have the opening, grand opening event in May, I believe. Yes, so May 10th. It will be on May 10th, I believe. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Shout out to, we're looking forward to it. I don't know what the designs and everything are going to look like. Um, we just really encourage the kids to show their pride in the neighborhood and everything like that. So, And along those same terms. There's um, more? Of course there oh, is. Oh, good. We have another opportunity for neighborhood folks, kids alike, to come together and show off their pride, um, get creative, and all of that. So we have, we're excited to bring back the Philadelphia Federal Credit Union Kensington, Derby, and Arts oh, Fest. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yes. So May 14th this year. Jump in. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Super good. Yeah. Thank you, Hammy. <laughs> May 14th this year, we will be bringing back one of the best events in the neighborhood, the Kensington Derby and Arts Festival. If you haven't seen it before, this is your chance, and it's great. Um, it is Heart Arts Festival with vendors from all across the, the city, um, a focus on our local vendors. Um, out there vending art, food, beer, and everything in between. Um, we have two stages with musical acts from all across Philadelphia. Will Usher be performing? No, I don't book Usher for oh, this. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, uh, that's not in the budget. Um, uh, but I, I've been waiting for months now. Well, maybe if you write me a grant, um, I can uh, I can bring one you One of those Usher. Usher grants? Yeah, one of those yeah, Usher grants. That'll come through. I'm sure it will. Um, but anyway, <laughs> outside of Usher... Uh, 
the arts festival portion I already talked about, but then we also have a human powered parade, which we call the sculpture derby. That's awesome. I can't um, wait. where folks weld together two bikes or just ride a bike in costume. Um, so I've seen people take an entire truck frame and take the engine out and make it human powered. Um, really, it runs the entire gamut of creativity. But these sculptures then are paraded through the neighborhood on an obstacle course. Um, which snakes all through Fishtown and Kensington and ends in an epic mud pit. Appa- which is apparently where I'm going to be stationed. Absolutely. Of course. Mark will be at because, the mud pit. Because I love dirt. He sure yes, does. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, but these derbies also compete for a bunch of different awards, including Best Breakdown, Best, best Costume, and overall People's Choice Awards. So people get to vote in on their favorite derby as well. It's just a great day in the neighborhood, and this happens all on Trenton Avenue between Frankfurt Ave and Norris Street from 12 to 6 on May 14th. And this is my first time experiencing it because we you know because of covid we could never do it absolutely um, yeah thrilled that we were able to keep the tradition going definitely looking forward to it uh have my lab coat and mud goggles ready fantastic and for our guest i'm sure you're picking up already that i'm quite the diva <laughs> so to me be in the mud pit is a big accomplishment laurel you doing it right over there i am you seem to be cringing already Eyes tearing. Uh, I'm cool, but you're all the clamped great. already. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Wonderful. Back to you, Kay. <laughs> well, that um, that's a lot, by the way. I was gonna say that is a lot. We do have a couple of other um art projects in the works. Shout out to Mothership Toy Gallery. We've been working very closely with them um on some community mural projects. So I'm hoping that. Uh, we'll be able to receive some funding for that project very soon as well and bring some more public art to the neighborhood, um, which I'm always super excited about. Um, but now that I'm done talking about all of our fun art projects we have going on, I think we have it's time. an opening? Oh, I didn't prepare for that, Mark. No, I'm, we usually always have something opening or something. I don't know if you saw the inky highlighted two robbers. Finally. I did see that. If you guys like seltzer and burgers... This is the place to go. Definitely. Um, actually, the storefront right next door to us is getting very close to opening. Indy. I think um, it's open. Are they open? I saw people in it. Well, we didn't announce them yet. So the Indy Salon, um, this is a stylist who has a big following, I guess, in um, Center City, I believe. Yes. Um, but this is his you know, kind of flagship salon. He decided he chose Fishtown, of course. Um, because it's the best neighborhood in the city. So he had to move here. And um, shout out to our next door neighbor. Uh, really did a great job on the building. He applied for a storefront improvement program. So thanks to the Commerce Department, um, we were able to get that facade renovated. And now there's some beautiful signage out there and a new business. And, and it's not confirmed yet, Other Half Brewing, Mm -hmm. who's coming from Brooklyn down to the old Goose Island spot. Great brewery. That, we think, is February 16th will be the uh, Friends and Family Grand Opening. Uh, I have ensured that we will be considered friends and or family and be there. I was going to say, I better be on that list. (laughs) Yes, yes. After the LMNO debacle. Right. We literally had an event that LMNO has a grand opening. You figured... We run the district. They'll have us there. And we're divas. Like, clearly, we, we need to feel like our We look like the kids from Oliver Twist staring in the window, <laughs> watching the others eat and have a good time. You know, so <laughs> so we never, we let Stephen, wouldn't let him live it down. So yeah. we're looking forward to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but with that. Time to is, shake our moneymakers, isn't it? Time to get into case track. Case track. Word. Still works. Still works. (laughs) Of course it does. Magic. Um, So this week we have a track from a local band, uh, a Fusion 45, 35? You're asking me? I'm asking Matt. Charmin, how you doing in there? That would be 35. 35. Out of boy. Fusion 35. Um, And this song is called Something On You. What Mark was 30 years ago. Ooh, burn. (laughs) Uh, 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 Yeah, it's true. Friend 
Fusion 35 with something on you. That was my favorite one you've done since we've been here. Really? Better yep. than the last one that was Beatles esque? No, that was this is my second favorite okay, one that's what I thought. that you've done since I've been here. That's actually can't been remember that far back. my goal it. for the last couple let's, of let's episodes. Hold on a second. We need to have a little session here. <laughs> What, what are you so angry about today? Oh, I'm not angry at all. You seem very upset. Today. I'm not good with. I don't, I don't like the Charmin nickname. That, that's kind Is of. Is that all right? Well, just say, don't call me Charmin. I did. Yeah, he definitely did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely ignored it. <laughs> uh, what if I like it? Is Love that all right? Milk. All right. Sugar Bear, then. Can I go with that? No. It's I'm gonna, how's better. This? How's this? I want to call you by your, your given name. How would that be? Well, Matt. No, man, I want to call you by It's cool. <laughs> it was gonna come I can up, deal with sugar. Was it going to come up with something else? <laughs> okay. How about Hesh? If I call you Hesh. Why Hesh? What's Hesh? There's a bakery in Northeast called Hesh's. Oh, okay. I don't know. Interesting reference. <laughs> I know. I know. I had it. Well, there's a whole story with that name, Hesh. But all right, we're going to go with Matt for since we're leaving. It's all good. All right, it's buddy. Cool. There's I'm no gonna, charm. Man. I'm going to give you a hug during the break. You need it. Looks like you need it, buddy. I'm here for you. Oh, boy. All right. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's time, before we take a break, to pay, play everybody's favorite game show. What's Mark wearing? Oh, hi, Mark. Hi. What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing today, today? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing today? And What's Mark Wearing is brought to you by Fabulous Fabrica for the best in entertainment, both in performance and dining and dancing and drinking. Go to Fabulous Fabrica in Fishtown. That's F-A-B-R-I-K-A. The K stands for, well, K. How about say? I like that. I, I know mm -hmm. you would. I know you would. So I'm going with the theme from the last time we did it. We had the whole Hasbro thing. So last time, yes. guys, I had the Twister sweatshirt on from I, champion i was gonna say it was a champion hoodie and it was twister themed and i was very impressed that was like the only time she's actually liked what i've worn it was a really nice champion hoodie Sounds like awesome. i kind of wanted it anyway, so so watch this our last is, episode you can see it so this is the champion monopoly hoodie yeah it's a little, i like this one too are you sure but twister's better twister's I'm better I, i'm a big fan of the um the tan color i feel like i have a lot of sneakers that go with the tan well i'm gonna get there i know i know we're gonna all match today it's all gonna go but this mint is nice yeah i like the mint yeah the it's money like mint it's refreshing yeah i find how do you feel about that matt no it's an it's a nice hoodie <laughs> i like it so what kind of game pieces do we got on Not it? A fan give me of the, the game, full tour like the well the game is sort of like oh, like well you got you got the guy the monopoly guy here somewhere you got okay. boardwalk you gotta pay me to go past go you know the whole thing yeah, I like how they... Um, I encourage people to just randomly move pieces on me as they see me. I was going to say that's the party trick, right? Like you just lay down on the table and... Well, that's, how, that's why I wore the twister everywhere I go. I, it makes you know, all the sense in the world of, now. Of course, especially especially where the yellow spot was. That was my favorite. Yep. But that's of course... <laughs> I do love... I'm going to miss him. I know. I'm going to miss you, buddy. I'm screaming like you can't hear me through the microphone. Right. But... You always have to, guys, you have to bring the footwear game to the hoodie. So let's see if we can get it. Oh, yeah. Of course, we got the Monopoly <laughs> shoes with, of course, the Slime Eagles socks. So there's no way you couldn't see me from space today. I got to tell you, these are really comfortable. I recommend the footwear highly, okay? If you're going to buy the hoodie, go the whole way with it. Be share. Get the whole ensemble. I got to be honest. I'm I'm not the person that gets the the whole ensemble usually, unless the ensemble is slightly mismatchy. Yeah, that ain't. I'm me. very particular. That ain't me. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know why you're putting me near mud. It's That's okay. It's never gonna work. It's fine. All right. You're gonna anyway, have a great day. You know what? Now we're gonna get back to talk about some real stuff and an exciting exhibit coming up. Um, so we're gonna take a break. We're gonna be back at you in two and two with Find the Fishtown Live.
It's been part of Philly for over 10 years, so Rivers Casino Philadelphia knows how you like to play. With better odds, more playtime, an upgraded rewards program, plus a state-of-the-art sports book, great restaurants, and more. Everything that real players want without the overpriced distractions. Rivers Casino Philadelphia is for those who play to win, not play to pay for some fancy new place. Rivers Casino Philadelphia, always on our game. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. The YMCA is just a starting line for the true self blooms only when we find our purpose, what makes us tick below the surface. My why is diversity in unity, a safe space in my community, living with sincerity, giving every day my everything. With my why, I stand strong, seen and supported all along. It's a million faces in a mirror and everyone belongs. Find your why. Learn more at ymca.org. For a better us. Welcome to the fastest growing place in the world. Population 115 million and getting bigger by the day. Easy to get to and almost impossible to leave. This is a place where you can eat like a king for as little as a dollar. Pizza counts as a vegetable and the food is simply to die for. Don't believe us? Just ask the friends and family of the 300,000 who did last year. Here, we've got the whole world in the palm of our hand, where folks spend an average of five hours a day on their mobile devices. You can even order fast food delivery through your video game console any time of day. And when it comes to nightlife, watch out, because there's a new city that never sleeps. With 24-hour fast food drive throughs and folks working around the clock, it's no wonder one in three people here can't sleep. This is a place we'd tell you to come and visit, if you didn't already live here. Welcome to the state of America. Welcome to Obesity USA. To learn more, go to visitobesity.org. That's visitobesity.org. Brought to you by the Pennington Biomedical Research Foundation. Oh, welcome back, everybody. You know, so those breaks are always good. I think people are just so fired up listening to the show. You need that break that our public service announcements can give. Uh, I didn't listen today to hear about what it was either hunger, abuse, Today was Famine. obesity USA. Oh, was it? Yes. The opposite. Of, well, hunger goes with that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's all about you know how to how to change your eating habits. In I think that's important. It definitely is. Again, the best hour of infotainment. Right here. And on it, right here on WWDB eight sixty AM. Oh, by the way, it's Fine Little Fishtown Live here, brought to you by the fabulous Fishtown District for the best in everything. You could find it at the Fishtown District. And of course, never get tired of this. Kay, how can people find out more about us? You can always go to fishtowndistrict.com or check us on YouTube, Fishtown District. Find us on Facebook, Fishtown District, or on IG, Fishtown underscore district. That's oh, just magic. Magic to my ears. And of course, we want you to be part of the magic that, she, that it is to find it at Fishtown Live. So give us a call at 888 329 3306. That's 888 888- Three two nine three three zero six. By the way, I'm looking at the board here, mm-hmm. and I was told very clearly that cursing was prohibited. There's cursing all over this chat. I, uh, Sugar Bear, do something about that, would you? I don't know who did that. That, that oh, it's gone now. Some... It's gone. You took it down now. <laughs> no, I just logged into that with my profile. Whoever that was. That was a, yesterday. Whoever by the way, was, inappropriate. That's not how we do things here. I apologize. You know what? But we're we going to send out a letter. <laughs> yes, please apologizing. Do. But you know what? Now it's to, we. The thing that we to, we love about our next guest is, um, you know, the the title of the show is the very long title of the show is mm-hmm. a picture's worth a thousand words. It sure is. But it's true, isn't it? Yes. Don't mock me. I mean, I'm a photographer, you're like, you're so yes, it is worth a thousand but, words. But, but to me, <laughs> that is my favorite type of artistic expression because it just can capture so much of people, a neighborhood, and no neighborhood really has gone through more of a change really in the past decade or more Absolutely. than the Fishtown Kensington neighborhoods. And our guests today are held, holding an exhibit to focus on our neighborhood and the changes that have happened. So I want to bring up first... Alex Connor, the owner and operator of Common Wheel. See? I see what you did there. I did. Well, the name Pronounced of it. it right. I yeah. did, exactly. Mm-hmm. Art Gallery. Alex, good morning. Hey, good morning, Mark. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Thanks for being with us today. Before we introduce our guest, the artist here, 
we were talking a little bit. I was joking, of course, about you know the name mm-hmm. Common Wheel, and I was saying well, we must have run out of spaces for the T and the H. But no, there's an actual meaning behind that. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do, the meaning behind the name, and um, what's so special about your gallery? Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so Common Wheel, you know, the first thing is if you live in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, it's very hard to name something Commonwealth because, very I mean, true. we got a lot of Commonwealths. Uh, so Common Wheel uh, is the name of the gallery. It means uh, the common good. And the gallery is focused on Philadelphia artists and designers uh, being able to show off, uh, you know, some of the strongest voices of our communities who are uh, engaging in conversations that aren't only important locally, but also relate to conversations being had on a national, maybe even a global scale. Uh, the gallery is located, uh, unfortunately, not Fishtown, Kansas. That's all right. It's okay. Uh, we'll forgive you this time. <laughs> if you lo- ever want to relocate, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, the gallery is located in the Rittenhouse neighborhood at 1607 Latimer Street. And, uh, you know, I think it's actually incredibly important to be in Center City and bring in conversations that are even outside Center City into that neighborhood. I see what you did there. Nice little spin. There we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I feel I feel really excited for this upcoming exhibition. Uh, uh, we're showing uh, two photographers who I think are some of the most remarkable image makers in Philadelphia, uh, Sheldon Omar Abba and Jaime Alvarez. Um, I think this is a really pivotal time to talk about their work because uh, with the uh, phasing down of the 10-year tax abatement starting on January 1st, yep. you know, what seemed like 10 years ago when it kind of came into being, this bureaucratic and uh, somewhat dull tax policy, it's it's really changed the landscapes and psyche of uh, the neighborhoods in Philadelphia, but I think almost none more so than the Fishtown Kensington neighborhoods in a lot of ways. So uh, these two artists really speak to that uh, in their form of kind of long form documentary photography and I'm really excited and honored to be able to show their work uh, this month. Now it's an exciting thing. How long has your um, gallery been in existence? The gallery opened uh, October 1st of last year. So this is... Oh, so this is a recent... Yep, this will be the fifth exhibition that opened. Uh, it, it opened yesterday, in fact. So this is the fifth exhibition at the gallery. And it's funny, one of the things that you said uh, that really struck to me is Philadelphia, everybody talks about it's the biggest small city or vice versa in the country because we're a city of neighborhoods. Every neighborhood has its own personality, its rhythms. So it's funny, and we're going to talk to our artists in this in a second, they could go out and get to the same neighborhood, to try to capture the same thing, and you wouldn't. No, no. I and think, that's what's so great about it. And that's the richness of living in a city, right? There's so many people doing so many things, you you can't see the same thing twice. Mm-hmm. So, Well, with that, we're so thrilled to have our artists today. We have uh, Sheldon Omar Abba and Jaime Alvarez. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah. Thanks for having so, us. Oh, please. You know, they, they were like sort of settled in like, we don't have to talk at all, do we? <laughs> <laughs> so so tell us a little bit about what you were going for with this current exhibit and how you came up with that and did that change as you were doing it jump in either one sure um well i think alex kind of maybe put us together i'm not sure um but because we were working in such similar fields that um it kind of it kind of worked even when we started talking more uh sorry when we started talking to each other more um we found out that we had like uh, kind of similar interests in in both our photo work. Yeah, I think um, Hami and I have known each other before uh, before this, so we're familiar with each other's work, and it's definitely overlap, um, different in aesthetic, but similar. And I think a mission or overall view we have of what we're documenting when we're out there. Jaime being a bit more centrally located in Fishtown, myself being more located along uh, Gerard Ave corridor closer to Broad Street, but very familiar all the way down and then up Frankfurt. Um, I wouldn't say much has changed with the work um, outside of being able to actually go through what for both of us is nearly half a decade, I believe, of documentation at least. Oh, wow. uh, With over a decade actually living in the neighborhood. So I've been in my neighborhood and along that corridor for over a decade with a solid five years at least very committed to the documentation of it, not just aesthetically, but also in the neighborhood itself and the people and the objects and the buildings. And, and so, so you've been doing this for 10 years? 10 years in observance, and I would say five years in a 
uh, deep obsession, maybe. Mm. <laughs> okay. With, with both the changing landscape and, you know, economies and neighborhoods. I live in Yorktown, just north of Girard, which is an amazing place to be. I think you can go to Temple up around that area and really kind of miss the idea that there are full neighborhoods of individuals that have been here for decades. And it's that kind of richness that I think is uh, important to bring to the forefront of this type of show, regardless if the images show people necessarily, it is really representative of the stories of individuals in that place. That's something that's very interesting, actually. Um, and one of the things that I thought was interesting about this entire exhibit is your ability to capture story through landscape um, in general and just being able to to document that change. Um, so when you guys are out in the field and you're, you know, working, gathering your, your photos, what is it exactly that you, what's your thought process? What are you looking for? Um, so... Like Sheldon, I've been doing this for about 10 years, too, and um, but it hasn't been until recently, until the past, like, four or five years that um, I've really started, like, kind of honing, honing things down and getting it into a, um, like, a, like, a way to display to people um, through zines and, um, or, or a show, like, at Commonweal. Um, so one of the things that I, 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 when I started to look at Fishtown... Um, was just was just like a very kind of like pedestrian kind of way of like I'm walking my dog and I'm photographing things um, and sort of like working my photo muscle as I call it um, to just kind of have an activity to do. But as as I started um, as it, you know as the years progress and I look back at, at all my photos, um, it's more of like how the landscape started to change and sort of the contrast of like the old and new and how um, and how it um, it just keeps like kind of the transformation keeps like happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think similarly, it was pretty non-prescriptive initially. It's just observing the neighborhood as you can and things that catch your eye. And after a year or two, or after a year or two, um, some of those things I think start to come to the forefront as more noticeable changes or the unseen changes that you should be noticing. Um, and it also ended up being a bit of a entry point for relationship building in the neighborhood, in that corridor, and just familiarity. I think we're all trying to be familiar and comfortable in the places that we are, the places that we live, the places that we move through. And Gerard can be different at any time of the day, yep. any day of the week. Mm -hmm. It has many lives, so it's through that repetition, I think that things started to show themselves as being more important or more interesting. Mm. Um, and then starting also to dig deeper into why it was that way. So it's not that that building I used to like had some character, but now you're realizing through some research that that building actually was an old theater. And like it has a feeling of energy and life that was there because that's what lived there at one point. Sure. Um, and then to continue to see those things change and evolve and move and disappear is, uh, you know, also, I think, where the focus has started to be. And I have to say, in just being able to curate this exhibition with the two of you, you know, one of the most exciting things was was knowing your passion and your intention in your image making process was so important. But then actually, you know, I guess when did we start working about a year out, maybe from yeah. this exhibition, which is wild to think about. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you you gave me the privilege of being able to come to your studio, see your spaces um, and see this trove of images that you have amassed, you know, and unfortunately, Commonweal is not the scale of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, so we can't do a life career retrospective. Um, so really that process of whittling down those images and and picking a format in which to display them at the gallery, which which captured these large narrative arcs that you, you've been engaged in was such an exciting process. And, you know, I was really interested if you would share a little bit about maybe two or the three, two or three of the subjects that, you know, have come up in your work. Um, that have been particularly meaningful to you? Yeah. Um, I. So some of the things that I also look at, um, and, and I think I, I call it as a character throughout the whole um, 
uh, body of work is like hand painted signs or things that people put in windows. Um, because I feel like it, it reflects whoever lives inside or it reflects like a certain time uh, of the year. So it might be seasonal, um, you know, within the past two years with COVID, um, I got to spend a lot of time kind of walking the streets early morning by myself with a camera um, or with my dog. And, um, you know, people putting masks on on statues outside their homes or um, that was one of the things that kind of like really, um, you know, like spoke to me and made me want to like capture this moment in time uh, and which could be anywhere, but it's like really kind of amazing that it was Fishtown. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So I have two, I think that are pretty major subjects that, or thread throughout the work. And one, don't take this the wrong way, but trash in Philadelphia, if you've mm. lived in Philadelphia, if you've been out here, is a part of our, our landscape. And I mean, I'd say love it or hate it, hate it, but is an expression of lives lived out here. So you will see a mix of that character and it's object obsession really in general. So beyond that, uh, old school cars, I think it's something everyone is drawn to. And as photographers, probably a lot more, but those have been a wealth for me and a led to a whole other world and part of the city that has now kind of consumed my life for the last couple of years. So along Gerard Ave, you will see a couple old schools. You might see one or two of mine, maybe with a flat tire parked out there <laughs> now also. But, uh, Don't listen, PPA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they already know. Yeah, they, got, they got my number. Um <laughs> But those kind of objects, so more more actually ob objects, I would say, are something that ties it all together. With the cars, it was something that you would see every day in certain areas that I would obsess over and see moved around maybe from block to block. And you're curious about to maybe one day years later actually meeting the person whose car it was, who now years later is your friend who will stop by sometimes to show you the new things they've done to their car. So, again, it's the photography has really been an access point for building a story about a place opposed to just it being an aesthetic image. Similar to what Jaime is saying, it's like the catching these areas of expression in the landscape are really important because they make up the character, really, of these neighborhoods and of these places. And, and I'm curious, and Sheldon, we can start with you, is obviously in deciding to do this project, you must have had some pre-expectations of what you thought you might see or even what the neighborhoods were and the evolution of the project did any of that change did any of that surprise you about what you were seeing the speed at which i saw it happen i think we've all seen you know, the cliche the writing on the wall but uh gerard ave in that corridor it's a lot of blank lots that were nothing for you know the decade i'd lived here all of a sudden were deep holes in the ground and they filled up very quickly. And then very quickly after some of the larger ones were gone, everything else started to fill in. And I got, I was surprised myself by how quickly even me, someone who takes the time to really notice what's happening, could lose a building, see a new shining one, and not remember what was there. What was there, yep. And that, I think, was the largest surprise in it, is that even if you're being very observant of it and trying to, you know, really take account personally of what is happening that you can still miss it because of the amount of speed that it's had i think over the last five years or so i mean how about the you? last year yeah i i, I definitely well, i share his um kind of his thought about like how things change so fast and then what's kind of nice is that i have like i have documentation of what was there and be able to go back um and i think Sheldon also like sometimes we, we talked about doing this Sometimes where it's like, oh, yeah, that was the corner of, like, this street and this street. And it's like, what, um, first of all, like, the different style. For me, it's like the different style of building, um, what the materials are used versus what was there before. Um, there's a, near where I live on the corner of Norris and Frankfurt, um, there used to be the car wash um, place that um, actually had, like, a, a was it Mr. Monopoly or mm -hmm. Money Bags, right? Mm -hmm. um, which now is a big um, is a big condo unit, and um, it just kind of feels like it went by really fast. But it really has been well, like a, a few years. Um, 
But um, yeah. I think. Um, so Alex, I actually had a question for you. Um, I'm reading the press release for uh, this show, and I've noticed that um, you call out the 10-year tax abatement um, very, very prominently in the beginning of the press release. And with this art that we're talking about, um, there's a bunch of different stories that could come from this exhibit. What is it about um, the tax abatement specifically that you felt like this was the narrative that this show should tell? Well, yeah, I think the tax abatement, I, as I kind of stated a little earlier, it started out as this innocuous tax policy that is, you know, I moved to Philadelphia in 2008. I remember when it, it kind of was coming into being uh, and just kind of heard about it and heard about development. And as someone who, you know, wasn't necessarily involved in the real estate market, it didn't really, I didn't feel it applied to me. I didn't think too deeply about it. Uh, but then, you know, watching year after year, this kind of heavy redevelopment of neighborhoods in Philadelphia, you know, uh, partly to accommodate a, a new series of transplants into the city, as well as to create, um, you know, a, affordable housing as well. Uh, it, I suddenly realized what an important uh, device it was for changing these different neighborhoods. And so... I guess, you know, now I live in South Philly, so no judgment. Um, it definitely it definitely has changed South Philly in a big way. But, you know, Fishtown and Kensington struck me as these two neighborhoods which, um, because of their particular histories, uh, it, it affected incredibly deeply because they had large lots. They were manufacturing at one time. It was really rife for being used for large condo units, these kind of mega structures, which uh, we don't have a ton of in South Philly, actually, because we're so row home residential. Um, we have Bach, I guess, but that's not livable. Uh, yeah, so uh, kind of knowing it was coming to the end, I had actually I'd heard some news reports about it, heard some people talking on the city level, and it, it felt like a, a poignant moment to pause and reflect. So as artists um, and as transplants to the city, which I believe both of you are, mm -hmm. correct? Um, one of the things that we always kind of grapple with, is, especially when talking about gentrification, is the fact that artists are often the first wave of gentrification in a neighborhood. Um, artists move to a neighborhood because it's cheap to live. Um, there's creativity going on. There's there's energy. There's there's motion. Um, and then eventually development follows. Um, so as you guys were doing this project, how did you grapple with that internally? Um, and what were some of the findings that that came from that for you guys personally? Yeah, I mean it's it's obvious to see, and it's even potentially part of the content that some of the stuff that you're shooting up here is these new murals that are coming up sponsored by development and they are the Trojan horse as we've seen in many neighborhoods for development that's not necessarily going to benefit existing neighbors or people that live there. I personally did not feel too torn myself as a documentarian as I'm not taking too many of those funds to try to show a place that is something that it's not or more livable to one or another person. My interest has been much more um, in seeing the grandeur and quickness of the erasure to try to take a second to focus on the existing neighborhood and mm -hmm. people and have a point in which that we will be able to go back forth. Mm -hmm to talk about those things or to resurrect them or to retroactively speak to their importance because, you know, the economy moves much faster, I think, than our minds do when it comes to the impact that a tenure tax payment might have on an area or a place. And by the time I think some of us that aren't involved in real estate or aren't benefiting from those things can wrap our heads around it, you know, your neighborhood has totally changed mm -hmm. or a swath of the city is much different than it was before. Yeah. So kind of to piggyback off of that, um, because in many ways, like you, you, you both kind of, there's a prevailing theme of it seemed like it happened like that, yet it happened over time, yeah. um, which I think that happens a lot. You, yeah. you We kind of look and was the talking headline, well, how did I get here? Yeah. Um, as, as you were doing it, was there something that stood out to both of you, an image that maybe captured 
really the essence of all right this is this is this is the theme we're talking about of change and all that the one image that that people could come see um that really stood out really meant something to you both yeah um there's one image that um so i i constantly like favorite my my most recent images although this one um has been around for a while and it's it's a photograph of um that's on the card for the show um of a it's kind of a new structure it's taken on um I believe it's on river street um right there near um delaware ave um is and this the one that's all aluminum clad yeah one of those yeah mm-hmm. um so there's kind of, it's a new construction and you can kind of see the different materials like the the metal panels and the brick and, and the siding on one side but then there's a shadow of a gabled roof kind of um cast on it um and having a conversation the other day, Sheldon mentioned really well, it's kind of like you kind of see what the future is, but the past kind of like being reflected on it um, through through the shadow. And that um, that to me kind of like um, spoke um, like that's why, I, you know, that's probably why I stopped, took that image because I was like, oh, I love this. The way the shadow hits this building. But then once I started reflecting on it, it's like there's there's a lot more uh, deeper meaning of like. Um, you know, you really see time passing in this one singular image, um, in a, yeah, in a weird way. (laughs) Um, yeah, I would say, uh, the one hero image I have for the show is a large triptych. It's three images kind of together that tell a story and it's all of just one space and it's just looking north on 7th street towards Gerard. So there's a bus stop up front and then to the right on either sides. Um, it was taken around, I think the last month that the trolley was riding down Gerard, which is now, they say we'll be back. It will be. We, five years. Uh, my hair might grow back by then. Yeah. But I hope so. I hope <laughs> that's so. the plan. I know. Yeah. I want to see it back so bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> my hair or the trolley? Both. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ivy. But even within that image, too, uh, you can see out the window of the trolley, which is when they were also tearing down that large area near 6th and Gerard that mm-hmm. included the theater which in the image you can see in the background just fully exposed also. Mm. And so, I mean, it feels like it holds everything that I think is important and maybe missed sometimes on that corridor, which is one, it's people because they're prominently displayed. And it's kind of how we all are in the city. If you travel in the city, we all take the same train and same subway. So it's very unifying, I feel like that way. A little bit of nostalgia with the old theater back there. And then even the trolley, which is something that's lived. Iconic, yeah. lived throughout this time and it's this weird kind of time traveling transport that you're lucky enough to take to and from work (laughs) and just to remind everybody you can check out this wonderful exhibit at the common common wheel gallery i'm gonna get it right through saturday march 12th at 1607 latimer street in philadelphia with a special event on friday february 11th from 6 to 9 p.m which will be preceded by you know a private press Apart from five to six. I don't know if we're considered press, Kay, or not, but it's definitely worth checking out. I have a camera. I'm press. I had a girl. So I'm on radio. <laughs> one of the things, and Alex touched on this a little earlier, I'm fascinated by, you know, if you can both talk a little bit about your process of you have these years and years worth of documentation of photographs. First question, what is your storage system like? (laughs) As a photographer, like, I only know. My external hard drives crash all the time, so I can only imagine. (laughs) External hard drives. That's so lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, I've shot everything in film. Oh, wow. So imagine like a, a night, so a yeah night, you have a, a personal whole nightmare studio kind of, of folders yeah or a <laughs> living room full of film negatives that you need to search through like a haystack for wow for singular images wow so yeah that process is is awful but ultimately super gratifying at the end when you can see the work curated yeah. you know what there's also a really interesting parallel there with you know you're taking photos of development and then you have to develop these photos Mm-hmm. none of the process <laughs> lost on me yeah. yeah sorry that was just like a little epiphany moment for me like wow oh mm. 
interesting. Yeah, I feel like that would make me connect even deeper with the the story behind everything oh. because you're going through a process just to reveal the process. They, they mean a lot more when you find the images and you have to rework them. Yeah. So it's one to take them in passing, but then to four years later have to find them amongst thousands of images. Yeah, so, and commit them to film too. Like, yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, I've, like, like, I, yeah, I've been shooting everything on film too, but um, I think we're, I don't know, maybe you and I differ. I have like huge hard drive rack <laughs> that like has stored everything. So um, as part for my commercial work too, that it's like super double backup and everything. So. But yeah. then when you go to Jaime's studio, he approaches you with a a stack of playing size oh, playing yeah. card size photographs, like 400, 500. And he's like, this is what we're going to look at today. And you think, oh, and you just kind of throw them all around the table and pin them up all everywhere. I mean, you, you turn them back into physical objects. Oh, for sure, To yeah. then be able to review them to then yeah, it take makes, that next step. It makes it easier to kind of lay everything out and match things and, and kind of like say, do these two work together? Um, and I think for a photographer, that's part of the process. It's just, it's nice to have something physical rather than see it on the screen um, that you can say like, how can I tell the story of like this wall? You know, I have a, I have a photograph of this one corner on Front Street that's like, um, it was boarded up because they were doing construction on it, and you know we paste going on top of it, and then graffiti artists going on top of it. And it actually might be near your guys' office at the um, at the um, Fishtown District um, offices. Um, but um, it's just really nice to have and live with it for a while, take it down, put something else up, um, and then it ends up in a book. Um, the other thing I wanted to say too, like. Um, being able to put things on social media um, was was like uh, a thing that really motivated me to keep photographing Fishtown. Um, so I started a, an Instagram site called Ad Fishtown Daily, mm-hmm. um, and I keep you know um, not so much lately because I've been really busy. But when I get into the rhythm of things, it's really nice to be able to like at least post one image a day and keep photographing Fishtown and have people respond back and say oh, yeah, I remember this. Or, you know, there'll be plus and minuses. Like, people will have their opinions and they'll go forward and it could continue the conversation that way. Um, and to add to that, uh, the newest edition of Fishtown Daily, which is not yet out, uh, we are having a release party on the 17th between 6 and 8 p.m. at the gallery. So come on by. We're going to have special Fishtown-themed drinks. Ooh. And oh. you can pick up your own copy of uh, Fishtown Daily. Beautifully printed. Yeah. Ooh, I might have to get one for the office. I think we need to do that. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> In our last minute or two, first off, again, Alex, uh, Jaime, Sheldon, thank you for being here. Of course, uh, lovely and talented Laurel Fairworth, thank you for bringing them in. She's very busy over there. Um, Alex, real fast, if you want to, again, tell everybody uh, when's the exhibit, when they can go see it, how they can go see it. Absolutely. So you can visit the gallery, which is located at 1607 Latimer Street. That's just one one street south of Locust. Uh, you can visit us uh, Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The opening, uh, which will be um, a proof of acts required, is this Friday uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. So please come by, uh, have a drink with us, enjoy the show. Uh, and then, you know, keep an eye on uh, social media because throughout the month we'll be having uh, artist events with, with both Sheldon and Jaime, as well as youth art workshops, uh, which is something that we do at the gallery. So uh, keep an eye out for us. We're at commonweal.gallery on Instagram, and uh, you can also, through there, sign up for our mailing list. And make sure you spell Commonweal correctly. It's Always do. C O M M O N W E A L. Not. Right wheel like a car very 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 well done everyone thank you so much for being here today the time has gone quickly um we can't wait to see it um in our last couple seconds this is for our artists now you've you've you're got you've selected all of these photos and and i wish we had the time to go through your process of how you did that what's next Ooh. um continue to develop this out but uh, portrait series so a lot of this work is early work that I did which was mostly focused on landscape and next is to dive into a couple groups of people that I have been 
working with for a couple of years now. So mm. Portraiture, the other side. Yeah, I like it. I'll keep the I'll keep photographing around Fishtown. If you see a guy with a camera, I'll stop me and say hi, and I'll take your, I'll take your portrait too. Though I'm not so much a portrait photographer, um, but <laughs> but um, I'm also dabbling into um, getting into Stonehenge. So <laughs> oh, that'll be the future. <laughs> that's, that's so the opposite of Com- Fishtown. Complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, Jaime Alvarez, Sheldon Omar Abba, and Alex Connor. Thanks for being here. Thanks for, thanks for your work. Thanks for all that you're doing and. We can't wait to be part of it. Kay, next week is the big day. Next Wednesday is the day we bid our adieu. Bid our adieu. But until then, bye-bye, everybody.